Oh, where was I? Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, this is a channel about editing, post-production, my life as a freelance video editor, what I do and how I do it and how you can do it too. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button with notifications on so you don't miss any of my future uploads. If you're watching this video, you've probably seen one or a couple of the videos of my foundation series, which the feedback on that was that it was pretty darn fast. You know, it was just me kind of getting my feet wet, starting to make these videos, you know, trying to figure out where I wanted to go from it. If you guys want me to slow it down, we're gonna slow it down. We'll slow it. You know, a lot of people that are gonna be beginner editors probably don't even really know where to get started, like with the computer. Like, can they even use the computer they have currently? So right now, in this video, I'm gonna get started on talking about what kind of hardware you need to get started with Adobe Premiere Pro. The first thing you need to do is choose your platform. So you wanna know if you want to work with Mac or Windows. So whatever you're comfortable with working in currently, just stick with that. The software is configured to work with both, and I use both. When I travel, I use a Mac computer. It's smaller, and um, it actually reads more hard drives. A lot of people have their hard drives formatted for Mac. I was able to copy files from client hard drives onto my own to begin working. I don't like to work off of client drives because it creates a lot of liability. I don't wanna be carrying another person's hard drive around while I travel. And I have my Windows computer as my main computer. Uh, it's a lot faster, it has a lot more power, and it's more affordable. And those are really the main advantages for both. A Mac computer, it comes integrated already with hardware and software that works really well with Adobe programs. So you don't have to do a lot of driver research or you know configuring your settings. That's you know why you pay for an Apple. It does all that kind of work for you. And the advantages of Windows, you have the same capabilities of a Mac computer. It's more affordable. You have the ability to upgrade the existing computer you have. And I've done all of these things. You know, I've had issues with hard drives in my uh, PC laptop and, you know, been able to swap out, you know, parts and, you know, carry on as usual, just a couple of days falling behind on a project kind of deal. The other thing you want to figure out is if you want to work with a laptop or a desktop. I prefer laptops. I'm a weirdo. A lot of people that I work with, they have desktop computers and big towers and all this kind of crazy stuff. And, you know, that's cool. I've worked on those machines and they're amazing. They're blazing fast but I prefer laptops. I don't like being stuck to like one location where I work. I like to like move around my house or if I'm traveling, I like the option to be able to bring all of my equipment if I have to. For me personally, I went with the Lenovo ThinkPad. It's been my favorite for several years and I have the Lenovo ThinkPad P52S Mobile Workstation Ultrabook Laptop. Essentially, what I did when I was choosing the laptop that I wanted, I Googled gaming laptop. So any kind a laptop that is going to be good for gaming is going to be good for motion graphics and video editing. It's going to have all the correct capabilities and the only thing you might need to upgrade is the storage and the RAM. The Mac book that I have is a, it's an older model, um, but I got it refurbished for I believe $600 and it was the most unusual situation. I had ordered it. It was a third party through Amazon. It ended up getting delivered to the wrong house. Mm -hmm. That person had been on vacation, so it hadn't even, it was just sitting on someone's front porch for a whole weekend, wasn't touched. The woman opened it, saw it was not her package, and then brought it to me. By that time, I had already contacted the seller. They refunded me the money by that time and then this woman gave me the computer back so I could not, it was one of those things where I could have gotten a free computer but I couldn't do that. So I contact the seller, let him know what happened and then I had to PayPal this guy the money from the refund. And in those situations happen to me all the time, these just weird backwards situations where it's such a hard solution. <laughs> but anyways, oh here it is. 2020, okay, so over a year, May of 2020. 
So I've had it for a while. And it's done me good, done me good. And then I bought the Lenovo 2020 June. And before that, the last Lenovo I had, the last time I had purchased like the same model of computer was in 2014. So for six years, that laptop ran After Effects Premiere Pro and Cinema 4D nonstop. Maybe not all at once, but it always was on and running some, some sort of software. <gasps> Solid state drives are a better option because they don't have a spinning disk drive. Uh, the data goes directly to a storage place. So you have less lag when running multiple processes at once versus an HDD drive. And I like to go with a minimum of 500 gigabytes locally and the bare minimum for me personally is 16 gigabytes of RAM. Sometimes the added expense up front saves you time on the back end. So you can push out more projects without having to wait around for rendering or postpone other projects because you need, you know, all your machines just to like render out for one project. I highly recommend you store all of your project files, footage files on external hard drives and only have your computer as a software hub. This saves time while your computer's running processes, um, depending on how fast your drive, that's why I say you wanna have an SSD drive because if your computer is accessing an external hard drive while it's running these processes, you don't want a lot of lag while you're previewing or while you're trying to like render something out and edit at the same time. That's why you wanna make sure your machine has as many capabilities as possible. That's pretty much it about what kind of computer you might need to get. And I hope that helps you kind of decipher whether or not you can start working on post-production projects on the computer that you have. There's plenty of used, refurbished. I highly recommend searching out the refurbished options on Amazon. I've always had really good luck with those. The Mac that I'm using currently is a refurbished computer. If you got this far in the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in post-production and freelance editing, consider subscribing, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And until then, happy editing or computer buying.